الحمد لله الحمد لله واحد القهار عزيز الغفار مكب الليل على النهار تذكرة القلوب والأبصار ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وخليله أما بعد الحمد uh, الحمد لله غير بس إن الله سبحانه وتعالى that he allow us to come to such a gathering where we are uh, we are discussing the inner realities and to purifying our heart and understanding how to tackle those uh, the diseases that we have developed or the disease that we have the inner disease that we have and how can we purify them how can we understand the under, uh, uh, true understanding of it where they come from what causes it and what, how to remove it so for this I was given a topic about uh, lure talk something uh, and, and, and uh, uh, the disease of the tongue the disease of the tongue where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and this ayah is also res, uh, recited when pers- uh, one person <coughs> when two people are getting married it is also recited in the, in the khutbah and, and it, it says ya ayyuhal ladina aman ya ayyuhal ladina amanu ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullaha he said oh, oh, oh who you believe fear Allah okay now fear Allah in regards to what now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa qulu qawlan sadida and speak, uh, uh, speak what is upright. What uh, Sadida the ulama they say that what is Sadida, what is upright, to stay away from distortion, stay away from slandering, stay away from lying, stay away from uh, mocking, stay away from uh, uh, stay away from uh, talks of hypocrisy, stay away from all these things. That's what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when he uh, when he get, uh, if you really look at this nirma of speaking. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it in a great way, in a great form, He says, Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan, Allamahu al-Bayan. That the Rahman, the most merciful, the most gracious, the most benevolent, the most kind, the most compassion, has taught you how to speak. Has taught you how to speak. And this ni'mah is such that, uh, it, that you, my thoughts you cannot see, my, my vibration of my tongue you cannot see, and they say that when, when a person uh, when a person is uh, is when he speaks, what happens to him? They say that there, there's receptors, and there's uh, uh, these uh, these are transformed into uh, a, into electrical pulse, and and they, and they travel in the speed of 80, 80 miles per hour, and they and they transfer into uh, and and they transfer into the person's ear. In the ear, there's three bones. Hammer, uh, anivalent, uh, uh, strip it, and when it, uh, w- and 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 in these in these there's receptors of hundred uh, thousand recept- uh, receptors that catches these waves that is traveled by the wind, uh, wind of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala into into the years, and behind that behind that there's okla, is okla it's, uh, it's an instrument, it's an instrument looks like the harp, the musical instrument. And has about six thousand six thousand strings, and each one of those strings create uh, uh, create different frequency of sound, and the, and and that okla is sitting in a uh, in a puddle of uh, of liquid, in in, li- in a pool of liquid, and from there it uh, it creates a, uh, uh, from there it creates different uh, 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 different frequency of sound. And it and it vibrates about eight, uh, eighteen thousand, eighteen thousand nerve cells, and that that powers your brain. That it traveled, uh, that it traveled eighty thousand per uh, per mile into your brain. Then you're able to understand, and, and within milliseconds, you're able to understand what the person is saying in front of you. This is what Rahman Allamahul Bayan that he has taught you how to speak. This this is the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given, with this with this same name that you could, you could earn your Jannah, you could earn your Jahannam. Either you could earn your Jannah, either uh, you could earn your Jahannam. It's a beautiful hadith of uh, uh, Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu an, and who Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu an is, he's one of the galaxy of the Sahaba, one of the great galaxy of the Sahaba, who had, uh, who had directly Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uhibbuka ya Mu'ad, that, uh, uh, oh, oh Mu'ad, that I love you, O oh Mu'ad, that he is a direct statement of Rasulullah sallallahu towards Mu'ad uh, radiallahu an, 
and and, and Muadh would be uh, uh, would be amongst uh, would be amongst those Rasulullah said in the day of Qiyamah he will hold on to the flags of the he will be the Imam of the ulama in uh, in the day of Qiyamah and he will hold on to the flags of ulama and all the ulama will be behind uh, uh, Muad bin Jabal radiallahu an and he's narrating this hadith and it's a it's a lengthy hadith there's no time to go into it and in 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 the hadith Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أخبرك بملاك بملاك ذلك كله كله he said should I not inform you the gist and the core of uh, of everything before that before this hadith is mentioned about the pillars of uh, pillars of uh, of Islam the the the, the main uh, objective of Islam is uh, the shahadat is mentioned the salah is mentioned jihad is mentioned and he said that but the core and the gist of all of it should I inform you of Mu'ad he said of course bala ya rasulullah of course inform you of it and he uh, and then Rasulullah said, "Fa'akhda bilisani he," and he got hold of his tongue. And he said, uh, "He got hold of his tongue," and he said, "Waqala," and he said, "Kuffa alayka hada." He said, "He said, restrain this tongue, restrain this tongue, and when he say, uh, say, uh, stay away from uh, 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 from speaking this tongue in, law, in unlawful way." And there's Mu'adh uh, the Alawn. He's he's the Imam. He's the Imam of Ulama, and he's 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 amazing. He's shocked. He said, "Ya Ras," uh, and he's shocked. He said, "Ya Nabi Allah, that we would be we would be accountable of what we speak. We'll be we'll be held accountable for what we say." And Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, "Thakilat ka ya ummu ya Muadh." He said, "What's wrong with you, O Muadh?" He said, "The majority of the people that will go into hell is because of this tongue." The majority of my ummah that would fall into Jahannam face down is because of the uh, because of this tongue. The unlawful way of this tongue is used, and is described as a snake, is a poison snake. And 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 and, and he said because uh, is, and and the Muadh is is in is in awe and shocked that he didn't understand the value that this tongue has. And and Abu Dhar the Hadith of Abu Dhar Abu Dhar Ghafari رضي الله عن he said that he said oh oh Abu Dhar if I I'll tell you one action that is very light you don't have to break your back you don't have to stand all night in tahajjud salah you don't have to fast all morning you don't have to break your fast it's very light very light but uh, 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 but but the reward of it is immense the reward of it is immense abu dhar he said of course tell me what it is and he's waiting for rasulullah sallam to answer he's anticipated just like a child he's anticipated he said what is a sumt a sumt he said keep this mouth shut keep this mouth shut the sahaba they say, they say that uh, 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 abu dhar ghafari radiyallahu an would not speak for weeks and weeks. He would not speak. He said, "If you get control of this tongue, that you don't say anything." Let's put this in. Uh, uh, let me give you an example from the Sirat of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As we know, Rasulullah sallallahu is rahmatul alamin. He is a mercy for the entire humanity, for mercy for everyone. And as we know, what happened in Taif, he's been stoned by the people of Taif in Mina. For three miles, he's been he's been uh, he's uh, he's uh, stone being uh, uh, thrown at him, the rocks being thrown at him, and he's been injured for three miles continuously. Uh, they're pelting stones at Rasulullah sallallahu and and Ohad, we know Utba um, bin Abi Waqas, he throws a stone, a rock at Rasulullah sallallahu and hits the face of Rasulullah sallallahu in which that uh, one of the tooth of Rasulullah sallallahu becomes shaheed. And he falls back, and and his neck hits another rock, and he falls unconscious. The physical pain is unbearable. The physical pain is unbearable. Where he's being stoned, and other he's being uh, 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 he's been hurt physically. He's been hurt uh, so much so. But these people of Taif, when they came to Medina to accept Islam, Rasulullah uh, Sallallahu Alaihi did their istiqbal, and he made. Special tents for them in Masjid Nabwi, and he would host food. Uh, he would prepare food for them, and he would sit with them uh, every night, 
And one night Rasulullah became, uh, came late and he presented an excuse to them. He said that I was finishing one section of the Quran that I have not finished. So that took me long. And he sat down with these people of Taif who pelted him, who threw rocks at him for three miles in, uh, in Mina. He did, not t uh, he did not repent towards them. In Uhud, the uh, Sahaba, they saying, Ya Rasulullah, this is time to make dua against them. He's, what he said, Allahumma ahdi qawmi fa'innahum la ya'lamun. He said, Oh Allah, guide them, guide my nation, they don't, they don't know me. For this reason, they're hurting me in this way. And uh, when the time came for Fatih Makkah, and, he's, uh, and, and they started marching from Medina towards Makkah. When they're marching towards Makkah, they, uh, they encounter with, uh, uh, from, from Makkah, the family of Abbas radiallahu anh, who was the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is approaching towards Makkah, doing hijrat from, uh, from Makkah. And they met with Rasulullah sallallahu as they're marching out from Medina. And they accept Islam, and Rasulullah sallallahu said that you're the last muhajireen, and is, 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 is uh, Fadl bin Abbas, the son of Abbas, and Abbas radiallahu anh, himself, and his Ummul, uh, Ummul Fadl, the wife of Abbas radiallahu anh, is also there. Abdullah bin Abbas, and they, they, Rasulullah ﷺ accepted Islam happily, and he told them that you're the last of Muhajirin. After this day, there'll be no, no more Hijrah, there'll be no more Muhajirin. Uh, and, and with them, there's two other Sahaba. Who are these two Sahaba? One is Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah and Sufyan bin Abi, uh, Abi Harith. Now, not Sufyan bin uh, 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 Harb, not him. Sufyan bin Abi Harith. Who are these individuals? They are the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abdullah bin um, uh, uh, Abi, uh, Abi Umayyah is the son of the aunt of Rasulullah, Atika, who is who is the sister of Abu Talib, and and the daughter of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And 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 Sufyan bin Abi Harith. Harith was the eldest son of Abu uh, Abdul Muttalib, and he is also the paternal cousin of Rasulullah. They both are cousins, first cousins of Rasulullah sallallahu <coughs> And what he says to them, he said, do not let them enter. I, I'm, not in need of their Islam, I'm not in need of their, uh, of their Islam. I do not want them to accept Islam. And he rejects them. As he rejects them, what made him reject? What made him reject these two individuals is, is because the cause of the tongue. The cause, the filth of the tongue that, that disturbed and hurt the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam What was the incident with Abd, uh, Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah? That in Mecca, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the delegation of Quraysh, they said to come and we will sit down with you. We'll think about accepting Islam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approaches the people, uh, the leaders of Quraysh and Quraysh. And they start putting, un uh, they start putting, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam excited that these people will accept Islam. And he's happy and he's able, to, uh, he's able to talk to them. They start putting condition, unconscious conditions on Rasulullah sallallahu to Rasulullah sallallahu becomes disheartened from them. And then he says that, he said, I, I, either you accept. If you accept, he said, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot ask these conditions. I cannot fulfill this condition. Neither I could ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill these conditions. At this moment, he becomes disappointed and he leaves from the people of Quraysh. And he leaves. And Abdullah bin Abi Umayy, he comes to, uh, 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 and he follows Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, oh Muhammad, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? That your arrogance is such, na'udhu billah, that you're not able to fulfill the condition of the people of Quraysh. And he said that if you, uh, even, uh, he said that, he said, I will, I will never believe in you, even if you put a letter from, uh, from, uh, from here to the heavens, and you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you, get a, and you get a sealed letter, uh, epistle, and you bring down four angels from there, and they witness that, that, that you're, the, you're the messenger of Allah, I will not believe in you even then. Even the angels come down and they witness, uh, uh, witness that you're the, Rasul, uh, you're the messenger of Allah. I will, not, uh, I will not accept. This hurt the Prophet ﷺ so much so that he's not ready to accept their Islam. And, 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 and then and it, was, it, was, it was the intercession of our mother, Umm Salma, radiallahu anha. And she was wise, and she was intelligent. And, she was, and, and uh, Abdullah bin, uh, 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 ibn Umayyah was the brother of, uh, of, 
Umbul Mu'mineen, Umm Salma radiallahu anha, she constantly coming to Rasulullah sallallahu He said, Ya Rasulullah, if you reject them, they would, uh, uh, he said, you're, you're the most merciful. You keep sila rahmi. You're the most kind. You're rahmatulil alameen. If you reject these two individuals, if you reject him, what would happen to him? They'll be destroyed in this world and they'll be destroyed in hereafter. And she's constantly uh, interceding and, and constantly speaking to Rasulullah sallam. And as Rasulullah sallam is becoming softer and softer and softer to a point, become uh, relentless. And he said to bring them. And he accepted Islam and they became, uh, uh, they accepted, uh, Rasulullah sallam accepted Islam because of the intercession of his wife, Umm Salma radiallahu anh. And the, and the other person, Sufyan bin, uh, Su, uh, Sufyan bin Abi Harith, he used to read poetry in hatred of Rasulullah sallallahu in mockery of Rasulullah sallallahu and, 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 and all, they did not throw any pebbles. They did not throw any stones at Rasulullah sallallahu They did not cause any physical harm towards Rasulullah sallallahu But the harm they have caused was the tongue. They spoke foul, uh, foul poetries and mockery of Rasulullah and it hurt Rasulullah sallallahu such if Umm um, uh, um, Salma radiallahu anha was, was not, uh, if she was not present, these people would have been doomed for the rest of their life, not in this world and hereafter as well. And because of, and, and, and this tongue that, if, that you have to put ihram of, and this ihram is not temporarily, you have to put this ihram till, uh, till you mow, till you, till you die. And, uh, and, and he said, and he said uh, uh, as a saying, he said, uh, jirmuhu kathir, uh, jirmuhu kathir, he said this, this is a small piece of meat. It's a small piece of meat, but the crime is large. The crime is immense of this tongue. Uh, 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 Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahimullah, he mentions, he said that I, 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 have, I have observed, uh, observed the mashayikh and have sat into, uh, amongst the mashayikh and have sat in their, in their footsteps. And what I have learned, I have not, uh, he said, they did not make ibadah to stand up all night and pray. They did not make, uh, they did not make ibadah and piety, to, uh, to call piety to, to be Allah wala to pray all night or to pray uh, or to fast all day. He said, he said, he said, he said, to protect your tongue from, uh, from speaking foul about people. Protect your tongue from pe speaking foul about people. A person could stand all night and praying and fast all day. But he said, but, but his tongue is not safe from speaking foul against the people. He backspite about his Muslim brothers. He lies about his Muslim brothers. He speaks hypocrisy against them. And he says foul things about them. And he said that he said in, the, in the day of Qiyamah, he was stand, uh, he was stand in uh, front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bankrupt. He was stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bankrupt. He did all this ibadah and he was stand, still, still stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bankrupt. So you have to protect this tongue. And from speaking, he said, al ashaddu min zina The ghibah, backbiting, is if severe, severe than, than uh, fornication. That our masajid are not, are not safe. That what we do, we're constantly speaking, fall about our Muslim brothers. And, and, and when Rasulullah sallam laid an eye uh, on Kaaba, he said, and he said, what a majestic you are. What a, what a, what a sentimonious you are. So what a great, uh, uh, great thing you are. And he's praising the Kaaba. And he turns around to a Sahabi. He said, he, he said, that he said the honor, the izzat of a mu'min is greater than the, this Kaaba. In other words, you could insult the Kaaba. It's lighter, uh, uh, lighter, uh, lighter sin than insulting your Muslim fellow brothers. You know, man salim al muslimuna min lisani wa yadi. A true Muslim, a true believer is one that his tongue and his hand are protected. That he does not speak any foul. He does not lie. And he said, if you, and, and many ahadith, Rasulullah sallam, many ahadith you pick up and you see. And he said that if you guarantee, if you guarantee me that, uh, that you control your tongue, if you could guarantee, you could stay quiet, you could, you could keep your mouth shut. He said, I'll guarantee you Jannah. So many ahadith. Man samata najada, you, you stay quiet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you Jannah. And so many, so many t and, and, and the person who's, who's into, in, into the field of uh, purification, who's a salik, he needs, to, he needs to really evaluate what, he, what, does he, what does he say. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically 
and uh, biologically had put uh, and uh, that he had put 32 locks upon upon this tongue and above that he has put gate on it that you, that is your mouth and so may, may Allah give us the ability to uh, to understand what has been said and to get the true understanding from the ahadith of Rasulullah and the life of Rasulullah and allow us to protect our tongue from any, uh, any unlawful talks, any unlawful things, and unlawful saying from the backbiting, from slandering, from distortion, for in everything that, is, that Rasulullah has prevented us and allow us to put the ihram on upon, our, upon our tongue till, 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 till we die. Ibn Jawzi, he says, I'll finish out with this, is a person who, whose tongue is not safe from, uh, from abusing, the, uh, abusing the people. He said, he, he said I fear that he would, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, would not give him, uh, would not allow him to say his kalima in his last moments. Would not allow him to say shahada in his, in his, in his deathbed. Would not allow him to say kalima in his last moments. So may Allah protect us from, uh, from, from the disease of the tongue and the harm of the tongue. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.